Reserve Bank of India Governor Shakti Kanta Das didn't mince his words when he spoke about private cryptocurrencies at the Business Standard BFSI Summit in December last year. You know, that if you try to regulate it and allow it to grow, please mark my words, the next financial crisis will come from private cryptocurrencies. Das's statement was a reiteration of RBI's tough stance on private cryptos, in which it has called for their prohibition. It also came at a time when the industry was facing several headwinds, which turned 2022 into one of the worst years for it. A hawkish US Federal Reserve and a slew of scandals were some of them. On top of that, the budget for FY23 introduced a 30% tax on any income from the transfer of virtual digital assets. And an additional 1% tax deducted at source came into effect in July. At the same time, the government also clarified that by levying taxes, it was not making cryptocurrencies legal. The Enforcement Directorate also raided some Indian exchanges in 2022. Trading volumes collapsed across all Indian exchanges as the 1% TDS drove them from India to exchanges abroad. Coming to 2023, India, as the G20 president, is looking to drive the global narrative on the dangers of cryptocurrency. Officials in the government and the RBI have argued that while there is a need for strong global regulations for private cryptocurrency assets, banning should be an option in certain cases. And in February, at the G20 meeting of finance ministers and central bank governors in Bengaluru, International Monetary Fund Managing Director Kristalina Georgieva backed India's stance. Now, the centre has brought the trading of cryptocurrency and digital assets within the ambit of the Prevention of Money Laundering Act, or PMLA. This means that any financial wrongdoing involving such assets can now be investigated by the Enforcement Directorate. The move comes even as the legislation to govern the crypto sector is still awaited. The activities that will be covered within the ambit of PMLA include the following. Exchanges between virtual digital assets and fiat currencies, exchanges between one or more forms of virtual digital assets, transfer of virtual digital assets, safekeeping or administration of virtual digital assets or instruments enabling control over such assets, participation in and provision of financial services related to an issuer's offer and sale of a virtual digital asset. The definition of virtual assets includes cryptocurrencies and non-fungible tokens. So, will this latest move sound a death knell for the crypto industry? Or is it a sign that the government is trying to look at regulating cryptos instead of banning them outright? The recent notifications by the Ministry of Finance give VDA platforms such as CoinSwitch the status of reporting entity under the PMLA Act of 2002. This means that VDA platforms are now mandated to undertake KYC, monitor and record all transactions and report to Financial Intelligence Unit as and when any suspicious activity is detected. Such rules are always applicable to banks, financial institutions, and some other active entities such as intermediaries in securities market, real estate, etc. I think it's definitely a net positive because it shows intention on part of the lawmakers to move away from their initial attempts to ban cryptocurrencies and now move towards regulation. I think there was a shroud of uncertainty when it came to crypto transactions earlier and banks and financial institutions, uh, dare I say, wanted to stay away from these transactions. But now with regulatory certainty coming in the way of uh, a recognition for these sort of transactions and, and regulation for these sort of transactions. I do believe systems and processes can be put in place for banks and financials, financial institutions to get more actively involved in the process. Also, how does bringing crypto assets under PMLA fit in with the RBI's tough stance on them? Actually, the RBI position on crypto is very well known. I, I think what the government has done is that the government has taken a practical approach. They are not going to do anything very harsh on crypto. What they're saying is that, okay, while you are here, make sure that you follow the rules. And by the way, here are the rules. Uh, so these are two separate things. You know, the RBI is entitled to its views, but the government has to go about doing its business of governance. And that's what you're seeing happen at this point of time. Who will this move affect more? The exchanges or the investors? And what does it mean for the investors in particular? Especially since Seychelles based cryptocurrency exchange KuCoin estimates that over 115 million Indians had invested in cryptocurrencies by June 2022. Consider that the number of DMAT accounts in India stood at 110 million in January 2023. This is more of a back end sort of a compliance. It's actually a hardcore compliance. So, what this does is that the onus is completely on the exchange. What we have to do is that report 
suspicious transactions to the FIU and make sure that our KYC norms are watertight. So the, inf the end user is not at all affected by this. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is more of an operational issue. Uh, you know, the user might not even come to know what is happening at the front end uh, when he interacts with the exchange. There isn't going to be an immediate Im impact on individual investors dealing with cryptocurrencies at an individual level. They may have to work with exchanges to have their KYC requirements and compliances in place. In the event any sort of further scrutiny happens at the hands of the enforcement directorate, the change in itself may not impact anything, but I would say that appropriate documentation would always be expected in these sort of scenarios from the enforcement directorate about the veracity of these transactions, the commercial intent behind these transactions, and a proper documentary record to avoid any sort of allegation that there was something surreptitious about these transactions in the first place. Further clarity on the eventual fate of crypto assets in India may only emerge in October when the IMF and the Financial Stability Board are expected to present a joint technical paper that will help in formulating a coordinated and comprehensive policy approach to such assets, especially since the centre is reportedly reluctant to table the bill governing the cryptocurrency sector in Parliament until there is global consensus on regulations. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.